Dear attendees of the Petaspin School on Spintronics, uh, dear colleagues, dear organizers of the school, thank you for allowing me to be part of this exciting event. I will talk about multi-scale modeling of chromium telluride-based heterostructures. My name is Libor Vojáček, and as you can see, I enjoy spending my time outdoors. I come from Czechia, and I'm doing uh, my PhD in Grenoble in France, uh, which is a nice city in between between uh, three uh, mountain chains with the Alps in the east and uh, the city itself is actually completely flat so it's very bike friendly and uh, there were winter olympics and they have a local spirit called Chartres developed by the monks uh, for 200 years. Maybe you will come for a beam time uh, at the ESRF synchrotron uh, and uh, this area hosts about 10,000 researchers from both private and public sector. I'm doing my PhD at Spintech in the group of theory and modeling of Professor Meyer uh, Chief, and uh, the topic is on multi-scale modeling for Spintronic devices. Today's project is a collaboration with our experimental colleagues at the 2D Spintronics group of Dr. Mathieu Jamé. Why multi-scale? We start from uh, ab initio DFT calculations, which are uh, systems uh, typically in length scales of several nanometers maximum and we can build approximative models to uh, simulate uh, magnetization dynamics or transport uh, in larger scale systems several uh, tens of nanometers. I will talk about these packages but first let me motivate 2D materials for spintronics uh, then tell uh, Bit about chromium telluride, its structural and magnetic properties, and then uh, its heterostructures with other 2D materials. So 2D materials have strong potential for spintronics. It's a very young field. First discoveries of magnetism in 2D dating back to 2016. And there's a lot of possibilities of stacking different 2D materials on top of each other because they are very weakly bonded by the van der Waals interaction and thus forming the so-called heterostructures with uh, novel properties. Chromium telluride is a, a van der Waals uh, layered uh, magnet. Uh, so the chromium here is magnetic, the tellurium is a heavy uh, calcogenide with strong spin orbit coupling, but experimentally usually you have a uh, these extra chromium atoms in the van der Waals gaps, so then the stoichiometry is chromium 2, tellurium 3. This is what I will focus on in this talk. Uh, there is a magnetism, the Curie temperature is around um, room temperature, which is precious in 2D materials. Uh, there's perpendicular anisotropy and some interesting phenomena. Uh, for instance, the anomalous hull uh, changes its sign when heating the material. And also there is topological hall effect, which uh, shows up as these overshoots uh, in the hall signal, which signify presence of non-collinear magnetism, uh, possibly skirmions. So we can, uh, they can experimentally grow and we can uh, also build heterostructures on top of different 2D materials. Uh, the interfaces are very sharp and this uh, allows for studying proximity effects in these 2D materials induced by the magnetic chromium telluride. So there are three uh, 2D materials of choice. The first is the graphene with its notoriously known linear dispersion, then uh, tungsten disulnite, which is a 2D semiconductor, and uh, there is some spin-dependent valley effect, and uh, lastly bismuth telluride, which is a topological insulator. So in the uh, bulk gaps there is uh, um, surface states with linear dispersion, which are metallic. So we can uh, interface uh, these materials and build these heterostructures. We start from uh, ab initio calculations in DFT, getting the ground state, and uh, we did an extensive study of which parameters approximations are uh, appropriate in this case. We can get the uh, ground state structure, magnetic properties, and the anisotropy, and so on. Uh, but first, we uh, determine the stability of the termination, so there are four possibilities and we uh, calculate that uh, the one that is stable is the one with the complete chromium to right uh, layer at the interface it has the lowest formation energy so we will use this uh, 
in the further calculations. First, we construct a slab which is uh, thicker. So here, in X and Y, there is periodic boundary condition, so it's a thin film, and we relax the structure so we can get the CNA lattice parameters out of plane and in plane, and we compare with experiment, getting a very nice uh, match. We can uh, include the spin orbit coupling and uh, calculate the magnetic anisotropy uh, and see how it varies with the strain. And again, well, we see that um, at the relaxed bulk chromium to right, the anisotropy is perpendicular, so meaning out of plane, and this matches the experiment uh, again. Then uh, we can transform the ground state from uh, VASP to uh, the so-called Vanier functions. So in uh, plane wave codes like VASP, typically we have uh, the ground state in form of uh, plane waves, and then we can perform a kind of Fourier transformation. Uh, it's a bit more complicated, but we get a localized basis in the real space, and this can be very useful uh, because then we can get the exchange uh, coefficients and DMI. Uh, we can get the very phase, which is proportional to animal's Hall effect. We can build tight binding models for further uh, transport calculations. So first, we need to make sure that the Vanier model uh, matches the original DFD, and uh, as you can see, it does. And we also uh, coded a procedure to get the root mean square error of uh, these energies between the DFT and Vanier, and we see a value that is less than 2 milliEVs, which is uh, very good, and uh, we can use this uh, model for the exchange uh, calculation. So with the TB2J package, uh, we can do this. Uh, it constructs uh, Green's functions from these Vanier functions, and then it can employ the Liechtenstein uh, perturbative uh, formula to get the exchange coefficients uh, at arbitrary distance. Then we take these exchange coefficients and we estimate the Curie temperature uh, by the mean field approximation again with a um, code in Python. So here the exchange coefficients, uh, the interactions depending on the distance, we can also distinguish uh, between which atoms they happen. So here we see um, some competition of uh, negative antiferro and positive ferro exchanges. For example, this intercalated chromium has very large exchange of different sign with these different atoms. And we can also see how these change with the strain. Uh, we see that the strain, which is out of plane, weakens all these interactions, both the positive and the negative. So we can estimate the uh, Curie temperature based on the main field. Uh, and what we see is a very large overestimation of the Curie temperature. Uh, compared to experiment. So uh, to make sure that uh, the exchange uh, values are correct, we repeat the calculation in a different uh, ab initio code based on, on green functions. Uh, we need to take the structure from VASP because it can do structure relaxation. And uh, we can recalculate and we see a qualitatively very similar result also including the effect of strain. And we can estimate the Curie temperature again, and still we see very large overestimation. The trend with the strain is decreasing compared to VASP, but uh, this is the subtle uh, competition of the um, positive and negative exchanges. So maybe the mean field approximation is not accurate enough. So we uh, also take these exchange coefficients and we perform calculations, uh, Monte Carlo simulations with the Vampire package which can give you temperature and field effects, also spin textures in the real space. And we also wrote an interface uh, to Vampire from SPR-KKR. Mm. So Vampire is based on the Heisenberg model, uh, including the exchanges, anisotropy, uh, magnetic field. It can also do LLG. Uh, and uh, if we do this, we construct films of different thicknesses. We see that the uh, Curie temperature is really lower. It approaches the experiment and it's very strongly dependent on the thickness. Now we use the Vanier functions to get the very phase. Uh, here we need to reconstruct the model with spin orbit coupling and we can get the very curvature, which depends on the uh, band structure and then integrating 
these values we get the very phase up to some energy normally to the fermi energy but we can also change different energies and we can say okay if we uh, can shift the fermi energy of the chromium to right uh, if we can dope the material uh, by 0.3 eV, we get to a point where there is a sine reversal of the anomalous Hall effect. And this actually has been uh, shown before in another publication. And the last thing that we can do with the one-year functions is to build the tight binding models. So here uh, I show only a simple chromium ditelluride layer uh, in, in vacuum and here uh, this is the cut at fermi energy uh, in the reciprocal space and the arrows are the spin components in x and y and uh, the color is the out of plane spin component so you can see uh, uh, some centrosymmetric uh, dressel house like uh, spin orbit coupling and then we apply electric field and we break the reversal symmetry and we see a very nice circulation appearing which is a signature of the Rajba effect which is important for uh, spin uh, current uh, for inducing spin current uh, so we built a model from this uh, ground state calculation with the again with the one year tight binding uh, basis and with this, we can further perform uh, spin orbit torque calculations, which is the which is the plan now. Uh, this was all about chromium fluoride itself. Uh, we also built the interfaces with the different 2D materials, as I said. And here uh, I just uh, showed the graphene one. Uh, we look at the magnetic moments. So we can say uh, that at the interface, the tellurium and chromium atoms have very similar magnetic moments as further in the bulk while the carbon, of course, uh, the graphene is uh, non-magnetic. So there is not strong effect on the magnetic moments from the interface. But uh, what we do see is a very strong charge transfer, especially in the case of graphene. Um, here, doping um, the chromium to right by about 0.4 uh, e uh, electrons, which also causes a large dipole formation at the interface. And this might uh, actually explain uh, some peculiar effects that our experimental colleagues see uh, in the transport uh, measurements uh, with chromium right on graphene. So to conclude, uh, 2D materials are very attractive for spintronics and numerical simulations uh, can help a lot uh, because uh, the experiments in 2D are uh, often very challenging. So uh, calculations can guide and explain uh, phenomena. Uh, we see that chromium toride indeed has very uh, rich uh, spintronic and magnetic physics and uh, we employed multi-scale computation tools to, to calculate these effects uh, going from ab initio to atomistic uh, simulations um, where we can uh, calculate the magnetic and the structure properties. And with this I would like to thank you for your attention.